when from a distance you see a ship at sea, it's hard to realize that on board, life is going on with so many different activities, especially on a passenger ship. The captain is in overall charge. The officers are specialists, each with his own responsibilities. The responsibility for the machinery rests with the chief engineer. Very few passengers in the Transvaal Castle have much idea of the engineering side. But like most people who enjoy their work, the chief likes showing visitors around. Usually he begins at the heart of a ship, in the engine room. In a modern passenger ship, much of the control is automatic while at sea. But a turn of a wheel can stop and start the engines and control their speed. The power in a turbine-propelled vessel comes from high-pressure steam generated in oil-fired water tube boilers, which also are controlled automatically. A ship's engineer nowadays often has to know a great deal about instrumentation. But no marine engineer is given this sort of responsibility without proper training. During his apprenticeship, he must have learned theory as well as practice. Engines. In the Transvaal Castle turbines, the high pressure steam comes in at 950 degrees Fahrenheit and after it's been through the first turbine, it goes to a second turbine at a lower pressure. The chief engineer can only keep the turbines running under these high temperatures because the oil in both the engine bearings and the gears not only lubricates but cools. The same lubricant is also used in the hydraulic governor system which prevents the turbine from overspeeding. The 5,000 gallons of lubricating oil for the turbines is pumped continuously through the system from the tanks and cooled and cleaned en route. The oil is seldom changed, only topped up periodically. To last so long, it has to retain its qualities. But it's not only the turbines that the chief engineer has to ensure are running smoothly. Each of the two propeller shafts is supported by 14 bearings and turns at 105 revolutions per minute at a normal speed of about 22 knots. The last bearings between the hull and the propellers are in the stern tubes and are lubricated by seawater. When at sea, the ship is steered by an automatic pilot controlled from the bridge. You can steer with the fingertips. The rudder is moved by hydraulic rams in the steering flat. Also controlled from the bridge are the stabilizers, which reduce the roll of the ship. The stabilizers are hydraulically operated from gyro-controlled motor-driven pumps, adjusting the angle of the stabilizer fins automatically according to the roll. Routine checks are made on the watertight doors. They are operated with a fire-resistant hydraulic fluid. As well as the main engines, there are auxiliary units for doing different jobs. Turbo alternators are used to generate electricity for lighting and power. 
a passenger ship uses as much electricity as a small town. Electricity drives most of the pumps. Not many passengers know of their existence, but they enjoy the results all right. Refrigerator compressors supply air conditioning and cold storage. People don't realize the amount of equipment that has to be in a ship. For apart from 700 passengers, there is a ship's complement of over 400. That's over a thousand people to be looked after. Passengers expect to have a good time, but it's only by keeping the machinery running properly that they can. On a large modern passenger liner, everything is expected to run smoothly. But of course, smooth running is what any ship's engineer wants. Whatever the ship, whatever the job it has to do, whatever the condition. As these changes come along, ships, as they are known today, may alter. It may be necessary to learn different techniques, but the responsibility for the machinery will still rest with the engineer.